My name is Rose Amador LeBeau. I am president and CEO of CTC. Our mission is to help people through employment and education become self-sufficient. We have a day worker center. We have educational programs so people can get their GEDs. We serve a variety of people, people who've just become unemployed, people who have never worked. We work with homeless people. We work with people who have just gotten out of prison and have to re-enter the workforce. So we're full service. I think it's seeing people make the change, become successful, uh, make that transition, and actually having an impact on people's lives, a positive impact. To see these success stories is what it's all about. Hello, and welcome. You're watching Native Voice TV. I'm your host, Craig Pasqua. And we have a special show today. We have two special guests, two long-term residents of San Jose, of the San Jose Indian community, um, Marvell Harding and Teddy Kasky. So welcome to the show. Thank you, Thank Craig. You. Thank you. Nice to be here. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you for being here. Could uh, we'll start with Marvell. Marvell, could you tell me a little bit, about, a little bit about yourself and where you came from and what tribe were you? I'm a native of the Tewa Pueblo, which is in Okeowangi, New Mexico. It's a part of seven Tewa villages there. Those are the seven cities of gold, correct? <laughs> Supposed to be. Seven. <laughs> it is for real. And. But they didn't find gold. They didn't find gold, so so they moved on. Yes. Well, thank you. And when did you move to San Jose, Marvell? Well, I moved to San Jose in 1965 because I was offered a job at IBM. IBM, International Business Machines. Right. What did you do at IBM? Well, I started from the bottom floor, driving a forklift because I wanted to become a planner. And I worked my way up and I ended up being a planner. I was there for 28 and a half years. So the company decided that they weren't going to be here anymore in San Jose. Okay, is that they, I, they moved to New York or? Well, or they, they sold their product to uh, Hitachi. Oh, okay. So that's why, and then they went into, um, they were doing disk drives at that time, and then now uh, they're working in the two uh, computers, small computers. They outsourced their product. Right. Got it, okay. Yeah. So, so Teddy, Teddy Kasky, what tribe are you, Teddy? I'm Sue from my mother's side, and I'm Northern Cheyenne from my father's side. Sue and Cheyenne. Sue and Cheyenne, yes. And where are you from? I'm from a reservation in South Dakota, Pine Ridge, South Dakota. Okay. Uh -huh. I was born on the reservation. Oh, you did? Okay. Yes, and um, lived on the reservation uh, until I was 11 years old. At that time, my father decided because of the job situation, uh, we would come out on relocation. The government at that time was offering to move the Indians off the reservation and introduced us to the white society, and we came on, on relocation back in the 50s. Back in, That's pretty early. Yes, yes. I was 11 years old. You are a youngster. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you grew up and went to schools in San yes, Jose. Yes, yes. I grew up, uh, went to school here in San Jose and um, graduated uh, from high school, San Jose High School in the 60s and uh, w uh, went on to become um, a supervisor in the semiconductor field. 
Okay. And supervised for 25 years, and at that time my company also sold. Another yeah. outsourced job. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so did you two meet when you were in the industry? Is that how you met? Or? No, no. Actually, I met Marvell. We belong to the same senior citizen group uh, from the Indian community, and that's how we met. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's how I met both of you. Yes. Too. <laughs> right. So, so Marvell, you talked a, a little bit about growing up in on your reservation, and you went to the boarding schools, I presume, correct? Correct. Um, could you tell me about your life in boarding schools? Oh, I, I did not mind going to boarding school, but there was a lot of other Native children that didn't like going to boarding school. But uh, the thing about boarding school was that I didn't have hard jobs in boarding school. We earned our room and board. But I used to supervise all the little kids that were over there, so I had, I had it good. But then, you know, you live there all year round, and when you get hungry or you want a snack, there's no place to go to get a snack. You just did without. They didn't have vending machines. <laughs> yeah, they had a Coke machine, but that was it. No candy machines or anything else. Okay. And which school did you go to? I went to Santa Fe Indian School. It is now um, a high school and also a... Um, Art Institute. That's rather famous, right. I, would, I would imagine. Yeah, and my parents went to school there too, and so did my grandparents when they were in school. Okay, so you had a long association with that school. I sure did. And do you ever go back and visit? I went back, oh, maybe like 10 years ago, but it's changed so much that it doesn't seem the same. How, how so? Because they tore the the government gave the school to the Pueblos in New Mexico because that's where all the Pueblo students went and they lived there, and uh, they just uh, didn't do the upkeep. So then they gave it to the Pueblos and they tore down the school, and then they built another uh, new school. Hmm. And now they transport the kids back and forth to school every day, where they didn't do that when I was going to school. Okay. So you didn't come out here, you, you mentioned you came out here because of a job, not on relocation. Um, and that's similar to my story. I went to school in Oklahoma, but I didn't come out here on relocation. I think it was past the time, but um, I came up to school and then I ended up staying out here. But what, besides a job, what is different about San Jose than reservation life for both of you? If you both want to jump in, that's fine. What's the difference between San Jose and Pine Ridge or um, the Pueblos? Well, I like it because it's kind of like centrally located. You have winter, you have the winter sports, you have uh, sports that you can go to. And most of my friends are out here now instead of being back in New Mexico. Well, that's good to have a connection yes. with your friends. And I thought about going back home like three years ago and I, I changed my mind. I didn't think I would like it anymore because it's way out there in the boonies. And you're accustomed to the big urban life now and, right. what, and the, what goes on around here. So that, that would be a tough transition. And that's probably why I don't go back to Oklahoma as much too because I've established my life out here and you know, you have a life out here and you have a mortgage, so you're stuck out here. I think so. Um, how about your situation, Teddy? Uh, my boarding school, when I attended boarding school, um, wasn't very pleasant. I didn't, I was one of those kids that didn't like school, the boarding school especially. Um, and um, it was very crowded. We had to sleep two to a bed and um, it was just not a very good experience. They put me in bed with a girl who went bed. <laughs> and so we'd get up in the morning and had to strip the beds down. And, you know, I complained to my grandma. So my grandma went and, uh, and uh, went and talked to some people and they moved me out of the bed. <laughs> wow. But my, my, my experience with boarding school wasn't very pleasant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but... Um, 
I left there when I was 11 years old and continued my education out here in California. And um, I don't believe that I will ever go home because um, I, I once again grew away from that small life and it's more, I have more things to do out here. All my family is here, my grandchildren and my great grandchildren now. So I, I will finish my life out here in California. I do have family returning home though. Oh, you do? To South Dakota, yes. I have a nephew back there, and my sister is planning to go pretty soon too. Uh huh. So I, uh, but it won't be for me. <laughs> Don't go in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I called home, and they said it was like eight. <laughs> eight. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to be going home. <laughs> so hate to see it in December. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. That's that's quite a different change. Now, your life out here in San Jose has been quite a bit different. I know you both are very active within the local community, especially with uh, arts and crafts. Yes. And could you talk a little bit about your, your work, both of you, in, the, in that yeah. field? Yes. Um, when I first met Marvell, we were uh, working on a project of uh, beading moccasins, which we donated uh, when we were finished to uh, the senior citizens as a fundraiser. And we continue to do crafts, all kinds of different crafts. So we're very active in that, yes. And then you teach, too. I know, I know Marvell does. Marvell does, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I taught uh, quilting over at, for the uh, medical center group over on Meridian. And then there, I had uh, one quilt that was uh, made to honor this lady that died of ALS. And then one day I went in there, I didn't see it anymore. And then I thought, ah, it got lost. Well, it did get lost. It traveled to all the, the communities that had offices for the ALS. And I was so proud that it went. And I was teaching a lot of women, but I also teached a lot of high school kids. And I really enjoyed it. I did that for like two years. And I still make quilts. I make, I made a quilt about my own life as an Indian. And um, I still do that. In fact, right, there was a lady that came from um, South Dakota. She was teaching us how to make a star quilt. That's why I think this is so pretty. Mm -hmm. We don't do star quilts in my tribe. They use Pendleton blankets. And, and the Pendleton blanket represents, like for the men, it represents, like if they're wearing a tuxedo, it shows their, um, their, their uh, place in the community as officers for the tribe. Hmm. And then when, when they die, it's like their best suit. They, they bury them in the, the Pendleton blanket. Okay. I also, when I was in boarding school, I also became a, a silversmith. I took classes to become a silversmith. Oh, you and did? I, and I make my own, my own jewelry because I always wanted the, the, in New Mexico, our type of jewelry is, it's not the beads, the pony beads, it's the, uh, the silver and turquoise. That's what we learn how to do. And, uh, so I always wanted them, but I never could afford them when I was a teenager. So I went and took the classes, and I make my own stuff. I don't do it too much anymore because I'm getting arthritis in my fingers, but wow. I still have the ones that I made. Wow. Are there a lot of younger natives that want to learn your craft? Are you finding them out there? Um, not really. Not really? I, uh, no, not really. I, I myself, um, my mother never taught me any crafts. Um, we left the reservation too early. Mm -hmm. I was 11 years old. However, my grandma, if I remained on the reservation, uh, would have taught me how to quilt and bead, which she did. That was her livelihood mm -hmm. on the reservation, extra money. <laughs> so um, 
I left when I was 11 years old and unfortunately did not learn any crafts. And, um, and my parents kind of felt that we had to change our way of life to fit into society, mm -hmm. you know. So um, everything went away. We didn't learn our crafts and our languages and adopted the uh, a different society way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was more sports. We learned to play sports. And I'm um, sure they must have played sports back there, but I don't remember. I think they had a baseball team or okay. something like that. <laughs> they have a tennis yeah. team? <laughs> no, no, no tennis. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, in my tribe, they're very traditional. They have to speak Indian all the time. And when they have business to do with the council, they have to speak the native language. And <clears throat> I understand it fluently but I cannot speak it too much because I don't have anybody to talk to. And so whenever my cousin and I, we talk to each other about once a week, uh, we talk in Indian. And if I don't say it right, he says, I'll make a real Indian out of you yet. He says, you'll <laughs> learn it real good. So that's what I do. That Because it dies if nobody mm -hmm. teaches you these languages. And there was a lady from my tribe that uh, wrote a dictionary and she also was a storyteller and she uh, <clears throat> went to Washington DC and they honored her but unfortunately on her way back home she was like five miles from home there was a car crash and she got killed in that car crash oh my gosh when was that that was probably about ten years ago really oh wow huh I know in my tribe I'm uh, Chalaki Cherokee from on the Cherokee band in Oklahoma. One, that's one of my tribes. But um, the inventor of the Cherokee alphabet uh, was Sequoia, and he created the, the Cherokee syllabi, syllabi back in the um, 1700s, 1800s, and he's going to be honored in the next dollar uh, coin they're going to put out. I just noticed that recently. Wow. That, um, but he was a uh, um, uh, so a lot of our language is is you know written down, and unfortunately I don't speak I speak very little of it. I think I was more like Teddy. My parents uh, they brought us up to um, to kind of cast off you know our yeah. our Indian life yeah. and get situated with the yeah. the the dominant culture here. Yeah. So. Um, um, My parents uh, continued to speak among themselves the language once we came out here to California, but uh, they had no intention of trying to teach us because they wanted us to speak English. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we were kind of discouraged uh, and we would hear them talking, but uh, we didn't know what they were saying. <laughs> <laughs> I probably didn't want you to hear it. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> but, but, uh, mm -hmm. but I know Marvell. You and I have talked in the in the past, and you've told me about some stories where you're growing up in your village, and um, 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 it, it's big difference between your life now and your life when it was. But it sounds like you want to go back a little bit, and you know. Well, Hang I, on to that culture, that cultural piece of well, you. Well, I do. I, I think I, I uh, do more uh, traditional things at home than I, I did when I was younger. And cooking like, is one of them. Yeah. Well, I, I you I, cook I, for me. <laughs> I think I, I cook. I cook my native foods a, a lot. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, I, I do the bread and I do the, the the stews that they have, and I also dry corn. And I've learned because uh, we didn't have too much of anything when we were kids. We grew our vegetables because my people are farmers, and <clears throat> I have a, a little garden that I always plant in my backyard. I have zucchini, tomatoes, onions, and then I plant. Uh, my pumpkins so I can have pumpkins for Halloween. <laughs> I do all those things. But I get that from my family. Mm -hmm. That was just something that they taught us. 
Okay. And anything, are you, are you a farmer too, Teddy? No, no? I'm afraid not. Afraid not. <laughs> You're a supermarket farmer. Yes. <laughs> so you've, you've really assimilated. You really yeah, <laughs> very much. <laughs> and that's always a kind of a, a joke to me too. It's like, oh my gosh, how could I go from, I look back at some of the writings I've done back in the, even in the 80s when I was going into to college and writing in, and I can't believe, you know, I wrote like, I'm an assimilated person <laughs> or Indian. And that was not too long ago, and, well, to me anyway, but, but it's quite a, quite a ways now, but it, it still doesn't seem that long ago. And uh, um, I enjoy, you know, working with, with our elders and respecting them and their culture, their traditions, and um, it's very important, and I appreciate both of you uh, women for helping bringing that back to this community because it's we need it so much. Um, it's it's very different out here in San Jose. It's a very large urban area. We're over a million people now, and it's it's hard to keep your traditions and your belief and your culture going, especially when there aren't many around. Every week, it seems we lose more and more members of our community because of the high cost of, of living around here. A lot of them are going back to the reservations or back home or somewhere else where it's not it's it's not as expensive as it is here. So we should be committed for, for staying here. It's, t it's tough um, when you're out here. Um, is there anything you got coming up with um, any beating or any cultural displays or any shows you're working on? Uh, let's see. Uh, right now, I'm um, dedicated to uh, trying to take care of my husband. He's not uh, feeling well these days, so I just do little small projects that I could complete, such as, you know, a small quilt or a little beading project that I can complete. and and spend most of my time doing that kind of thing. Yeah, okay. so I'm not into anything big right now, myself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wednesdays, uh, her and I usually, we're practically the only two that go to this workshop that they have at uh, uh, the Resource Center. And they let us go there because we didn't have uh, the room in our houses to do our crafts that we wanted to do. So we supply ourselves with our own materials and then we make whatever we want in those classes. And they provide us with sewing machines if we don't bring our own sewing machine. Uh-huh. But there are other students in that class with you, correct? And you're teaching them? No, sometimes they do join it, but then they don't stay. Oh. So I, they... don't, I, I guess because uh, we don't have someone that's an instructor to teach them. But okay. I do help them if they ask any questions, you know. Uh -huh. I'll show them how to do something. But but I don't work there. But they supply us with a a place table to meet. Okay. And we go every Wednesday. Well, what about the hard uh, crap? You mentioned you were a silversmith. You told me you, you know how to weld. Yeah, um. I did. Well, when I got my first job when I got out of high school, I got a job in... Um, I was at a powwow, and this lady made an announcement saying that they had openings at where she worked and to see her if you were interested. And I went over and I talked to her and I said I was a, a welder, silversmith. And then when I did join the company, they sent me to more welding classes so that I could do welding. And I got more money. Mm -hmm. But I was always out to to <clears throat> provide for my own self because my family couldn't provide for uh, me. And I wanted to go to school, but I couldn't go to school because I didn't have the money. But IBM sent me to school when I finally did go work mm -hmm. for them. And what did you study at IBM then? More, more uh, business classes. More business, okay. Yeah. So no, no more welding or silversmithing? No. No more, <laughs> but but you know I did that because I wanted the jewelry myself. Mm -hmm. You know that I couldn't afford as a kid. Mm -hmm. 
But as a tech worker, yeah, then you could. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and but then so. I didn't have the time because I was working all the. I I had a daughter. <laughs> I raised my daughter, and mm -hmm. I bought my own home. Mm -hmm. And that's. I you know I made myself happy by doing those things for myself. Okay. Well, wonderful. Well, that's wonderful. That, um, and are you working with, now, Marvell, you mentioned with the language. Are you doing anything with your language now besides talking with your, your brother? And <laughs> My cousin. Your cousin, yeah, I'm well, sorry. We're, we're going to litig through litigation with uh, the tribe because they thought that I was no longer alive and they gave my property <laughs> to somebody else. Oh. And so now he and I, they found out, you know, like like I have this, uh, um, during 9-11, there was a, a statue of, that I could put on my uh, car mm -hmm. and it said, you mess with the wrong woman. They found out they messed with the wrong woman because now I'm having them survey the land to make sure that it's mine. And now the man is ready to move off. He put his horses, planted alfalfa on my property. Oh, that's, that's terrible. So I have to conduct myself by talking in my Indian language. Mm -hmm. So because that's how they carry on all their meetings. You don't speak English. It's traditional. You have to talk the English, Indian language in order to well, work these things well, out. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. I, ho I wish you well with that. Well, thank you both for joining us today. Again, we've had we've been blessed to have Marvell Harding and Teddy Kasky with us. Thank you, um, Marvell Swatewa, and uh, Teddy is uh, Pine Ridge uh, Lakota. Um, thank you for watching Native Voice TV. Uh, this, I'm Craig Pasqua. We look forward to seeing you again next week. And like us on Facebook and or YouTube. Thanks for watching.